love 27 love encourages guard my soul and deliver me do not let me be ashamed for i take refuge in you psalms 25 verse 20. marriage has a way of altering our vision we go in expecting our mate to fill our hopes and make and to make us happy but this is an impossible order for you for our spouse to fulfill Unreal, unrealistic expectations breed disappointment the higher your expectation the more likely your spouse will fail you and cause you frustration if a wife expects her husband to always be on time clean up after himself and understand all her needs she will likely live most of her married life in constant disappointment but if she gets realistic and understands that he's human forgetful and sometimes thoughtless then she'll be more delighted when he is responsible loving and kind divorce is nearly inevitable unavoidable i think is how i would say that but people refuse to allow their spouses to be human so they needs so there needs to be a transition in your thinking so there so there needs to be a transition in your thinking you must choose to live by encouragement rather than expectations the way your spouse has been for the last 10 years luckily what he or she will be in the future apart from your loving encouragement and an innovation in God love puts the focus on personal responsibility and improving yourself rather than on demanding more from others Jesus painted a picture of this when he talked about the person who saw a speck in his brother's eye, but didn't notice the log in his own eye. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye, you hypocrite. First take out the log out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Matthew 7, 4, 5. It is so important. Just right there that is just so important i cannot tell you how many times i've been working on things in my life and this is why until i've had a grip on things um there's a lot of subjects on this even on my channel that i have refused to talk about until i i felt like i actually had a, a grip on the things that i'm dealing with in my life and one of those things i've been struggling with is this whole idea that hey stop being a hypocrite um, I cannot tell you how much hypocrisy is in the church. Um, I've learned that while people are being this way, to love on them and respect them and give them just give them some dignity. Yes, call them out, out in love and make sure that you're being biblically sound. But also when you're calling people out on things to come from a place Of love I cannot tell you how many times I've had people say oh I am come from a place of love and they weren't you just know when someone when so I cannot tell you how many times I've had people literally reprimand me and they did it out of love genuine love you could feel the love while they're telling you hey there's a better way to go about something it's just the way they carry themselves the way they present their face their actions their words they just add up and you go, oh, they're trying to help me. Okay. You have to come across on threateningly. And there are some people out there that believe that, no, you have to be strong. You have to be determined. You have to have this wall up and you have to, you know, lay the law of the land because uh, that's how the Holy Spirit works. Or I don't know. Some, something along those lines that just, it just makes my skin crawl. Um, there's literally people in my own life who are like this, where they're hard hearts and they're like oh yeah no i can't have love in my heart i have to have this like armor on and i have to fight the battle of faith i'm like there's times for that and there's times where love is more important and anyway i want to continue reading Does your spouse feel like they're living with a spec inspector? Are they routinely, routinely on edge, fearful of not living up to your expectations? Would they say they spend most days sensing more of your disapproval than your acceptance? Perhaps you, you'd respond by saying that the problem is not with you, but with them. If they really do come up short in a lot of areas, why is it that, why is that your fault? 
As far as you're concerned, it takes both of you doing everything you can to make marriage work. If your, mar if your mate does, doesn't want you to be so critical, you need to realize that the issues you bring up are legitimate. You're not saying you're imperfect by any means, but it does mean, seem like you should be able to say what you think, right? The problem with that kind of attitude is that few people are able to respond to criticism with total objectivity. Oh my God, I'm not even, re I'm not even reading a three paragraphs and even a book agrees with me that there are very few people who are able to respond to criticism with total objectivity. Right there. Right there. I mean, I just like, it just, wow. I literally have a friend who has a YouTube channel and he uses his channel to be objectivity. That's how he like to advance the gospel through objectivity and facts and psychology and like, no, no, there's very few people want to listen to it. You know, if you want to reach more people, you have to come from a place of love, a genuine love. When it seems clear that someone is unhappy with you, whether by direct confrontation or the silent treatment, it's hard not to take their displease, displeasure personally. Especially in marriage. After all, unlike any other friendship, your relationship with your spouse begins with both of you bending over backwards to please the other. When your mate was your boyfriend or girlfriend, they were completely charmed by your personality. You could almost do no wrong. Your life together was so much easier, and though you didn't expect to stay that way forever, you certainly didn't see them being so sinful and getting so angry with you. You never expected that this man or woman you promised to love you could get to where they didn't even seem to like you. So when the stark contrast becomes living reality, your natural reactions are resistive. During the early days of marriage, you may have been more inclined to listen and make some change, subtle, sub, subtle changes. But as the years go by, your spouse's disapproval only tends to enrich you. Rather than making you want to correct things, it makes you want to dig in deeper. Love is too smart for that. Instead of putting your mate in a position to rebel, love teaches you to give them room to be themselves. Even if you're the goal-oriented type who places high demands on yourself, love calls you not to pro project your hard driving ways onto your mate's performance. Okay. You must realize that, that marriage is a relationship to be enjoyed and savored along the way. It's a unique friendship designed by God, who God himself, where two people live together in flawed imperfections, but deal with it by encouraging each other, not discouraging them. The Bible says, encourage the exhaust, exhausted and strengthen the feeble. Isaiah 35, 3. Encourage one another and build up one another. Encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak. Be patient with everyone. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, 14. Don't you want married life to be a place where you can enjoy a free expression of who you are, growing within a safe environment that encourages you even when you fall or fail? Your spouse does too, and love gives them the privilege. If your wife or husband has told you on more than one occasion that you make them feel beat down and defeated, you need to take these words to heart. Make a commitment to daily let go of unrealistic expectations and become your spouse's greatest encourager and the person they created by God to be will begin to emerge with a, with a new confidence and love for you. I've been watching this with Tanya. She she struggles with this personally. I I, th I don't think I struggle with it as much as she does. I feel very strongly she struggles with this, and I often do exactly these things, giving her room to feel loved, giving her you know a, a safe space to be herself while she grows. I cannot tell you how many times she's cried in front of me, and I think most people in my position, when someone does that. A second, it's eight, no, it's eight o'clock, so I have enough time to do one more video after this. Anywho, uh, today's dare eliminate the poison of unrealistic expectations in your home. Think of, a, of one area where your spouse has told you you're expecting too much and tell them you're sorry for being so hard on them about it. Promise them you'll seek to understand and assure them of your unconditional love. When you place high expectations on your spouse, 
that they don't feel internally motivated to attain? What does that tell you about yourself? What are some better ways to deal with these disconnects? I mean, this, I, some of these chapters, I feel like I'm more men for telling you anything. I'm not saying that as, oh, look at me, I'm high and mighty. Uh, that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, what I am saying, though, is that there's areas in her life that I'm helping her understand. Um, I'm being that, that partner that's being supportive and helping her grow and, and know God and change. And it, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing watching Tanya transform. Um, she's really special. And not just because she's going to become a wife in four months. No. She's special because of the fact that she genuinely doesn't just stay in one spot. She cares about people around her. She loves to learn new things and grow and she shows it. She shows it much louder than she thinks she does. When me and her first started our relationship, she was extremely shy. Extremely shy. Um, was terrified at the idea of going to my church and making new friends and hang out with the bishops and over just a period of three months now four months actually now but like no yeah but four months this is the fifth month I'm just watching as she is not hanging out with the bishops even when I'm not there she's communicating with people uh, maybe not online but in person um, yesterday morning she was not okay with just hanging out with me and Scott McIntyre but then later in the day after you know we had um, our tough discussions and breakfast well not so much breakfast but just went through our morning routines um, she's like okay I think I'm gonna try and though she has nothing she knows nothing about him we hung out and both her and Scott just clicked in their conversations and they got along really well and they both seemed to like each other as friends and it's just it was just nice watching them interact and just like it just blows my mind seeing God transform her in front of my eyes it's just it affirms more and more every day that my her relationship is meant to be this ain't me being delusional or wishful thinking this is realistic expectations this is God literally speaking to me through Tanya, saying, you guys are meant to be. <sighs> I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence her becoming a Christian a week after her and I got engaged. I'm, I mean, I'm going to be honest, if she hadn't become a Christian and let God in her heart, it would have been a lot harder for us to get married. And her willingness to submit to God and let God work on her Cause she, she, as we said in one of our videos, she noticed something in me that I had that most people don't. I have this joy, this peace about me that just keeps bouncing back, keeps bouncing back, keeps bouncing back. Every time the world just comes and slaps me around, I just bounce right back. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, and I take pride in that. I take pride in that. And God's just loving on me and. I feel like enough on the subject. I'm gonna get going, but I just I'm really proud of Tanya and how far she's come. And I can't wait until I meet her future self, see what that looks like. Thank you. Thank you for watching.